listening to the Transformations with Jane podcast. I'm your host, Jane Nakata, a New Zealander living her best life in Fukushima, Japan. I'm a podcast consultant and the creator of Pod Launch with Jane, a system that helps you create your dream podcast without all the drama and hassle, leaving you more free time to do the things you love to do. This show is for people who want to hear stories of women who are doing amazing things here in Japan and across the world. You'll find loads of inspiration for how you can live your best life wherever you are. I'm glad you're here. Let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Transformations with Jane podcast. I'm your host, Jane Nakata, coming to you here from Fukushima in Japan. We are very much enjoying the cherry blossoms here at the moment and spring vacation or spring school holidays. I hope you are surviving that as well. So my guest today is Blanca Kobayashi. I'm very fascinated with all of the things that Blanca gets up to and she definitely doesn't let being in Japan be an excuse not to try things. So her recent passion is her business, which renovates properties for people. And especially if you are a foreigner and want to be able to do this in English, she has excellent Japanese tradespeople that she works with and artisans who help her to get things done. But you don't need to go through the whole process in Japanese. I think that sounds fantastic. So we talk a bit about property investment in Japan. And if you're thinking about that, You know, you might like to get on the property ladder or uh, get another property in Japan. Then this is a really great episode as well. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, Blanca. Welcome to the Transformations with Jane podcast. It's great to have you on the show today. Hi, Jane. Thank you for having me. I've heard so much about your podcast. Congratulations on dragging on for so long. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So congratulations and thank you for having me again. Thank you. Yes, we've hit five years on the old podcast. It's been a lot has happened when I first started to where we are now, but it's great to look back and see how far we've come. So for the listeners who don't know you, would you mind just introducing yourself quickly? Well, um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Blanca Kobayashi and uh, um, I live in Japan. Although I'm from Czech Republic, I live here on and off since uh, 2000. And then now, basically from 2012, we are here permanently again. And so I live here with my husband and my son, our cat, two turtles. <laughs> we are kind of a little... <laughs> Little zoo what a cute them. family. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. It's just, it's great. Honestly, we have two tortoises. We have a uh, half Bengal, half uh, American short hair boy. And yeah, and then we have a three, 13 year old son. So <laughs> it's a human a boy as well. <laughs> yeah. Always a full house, always fun to be. And uh, well, besides the whole family stuff, which is number one though, um, I'm also a marketing director of our company, Kobayashi Group, that it's kind of, uh, it's like an umbrella company for all the enterprises and endeavors that our family uh, does worldwide, because we have companies here in Japan and we have companies in Nigeria Mm. as well, because my husband is originally from Nigeria. Mm. So we have companies there, we have companies here, and I'm in charge of marketing of anything and everything that we do. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. And also, I know that you have, I want to call it, is it, is it a kind of a new baby for you, this uh, renovation business that you, is it, how long has that been around? It, uh, it is a newish baby because we opened, the, we started the company uh, at the end of 2021. Okay. That, uh, 2022. Uh, we've opened two branches, one in Tokyo and one here in Matsudo. And um, well, basically, I first thought we, we started it as an in, just that as an investment. Hmm. But uh, then we realized that we actually have uh, a great niche as being foreigners doing something. So I kind of took over the whole thing and I realized that I actually really enjoy doing it. Hmm. And I'm, I'm actually very good doing 
<laughs> that's always good too yeah 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 i must say you know i uh, i'm actually really good at it so uh so i kind of took over the whole company and uh and now now it takes a lot of my time mm -hmm. but uh, it's something that i enjoy and yes, I wish I had more people working for me at this point. Right. Mm. Yeah, you know, because I like my stuff is Japanese and most of the artisans are Japanese. But I would really, really, really enjoy having like, you know, one more bilingual office person that it's good at doing the quotations and stuff. Or even mm. just Japanese that can do quotations because we have so much work and wow. my man. Poor thing. I think he. I think he goes crazy just seeing me walking through the door because he's like, "Oh, what did this woman brought again?" Mm. So I would bring, always bring new projects, and I think mm -hmm. he's kind of starting to be like, "Oh, again, not this again." <laughs> mm. Well, on this show, I love to profile women who are doing something interesting here in Japan and who are building their best life that they can in Japan. And I was very interested in this business that you've just mentioned, the, uh, what do we call it? It's a, like a, it's a renovation, re renovation. That's the word I keep thinking reform, yeah. reform, but that's Japanese. Yes. That's not English, yes, right? <laughs> the, re the English word is renovation. So you're helping people to renovate homes or businesses. Both. Both. We do, mm. we do both uh, private homes, personal homes, and we also do businesses, anything commercial. So mm -hmm. uh, we can, we do rental properties, we do shops, cafes. Right after this, this afternoon, I'm actually going to look at one cafe that needs uh, renovations mm. and the owners uh, are foreigners. Yeah, we work. We work both for we have we have both Japanese and foreign clientele. But uh, where I come in and what what I love about it is that we can work. We can kind of help foreigners that own properties here in Japan mm. to navigate through the renovations in English. Yay for that! <laughs> you, know, you know how yeah. Japanese companies are. They usually when they see foreigners, they get scared. Mm. They don't want to deal with you because they think you will not understand. Mm -hmm. properly no matter how good your japanese are they kind of just don't want to deal with you because you're a foreigner sure so, um, our niche basically is uh we are a bilingual re renovation company mm. so we can do this with you in english you can you know really express yourself what you want and then you know i delegate to my staff and you know they figure out everything in english uh, in japanese of course, because most of our, uh, most of our uh, workers, the artisans are Japanese, then they also like they we explain it to them in Japanese, so there is no language barrier, there is no gap. Yeah, yeah. I, you didn't say it this way; you said it that way. Mm -hmm. So it gives the clients the freedom to really express what they need, their worries, and everything. And pass the whole barrier between the Japanese workers mm -hmm. and the clients. So, how did you come upon this idea to start a renovation company? Is it something you've oh, like a long held dream, or no, you just, no? no, no? Well, you know what? We are business people. We are not. I had zero education in construction or in you know, in anything. But we we do we do build houses in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. but from mostly from scratch mm -hmm. we uh, you know apartment buildings or houses residential properties and stuff we do that but we don't do renovations or we don't do anything here in japan mm. but uh, in the fall 2021 we were doing our own renovations in the house and the manager at the time working for the renovation company um you know wanted to start his own business his own company and then kind of fell in love with my husband and wanted to team up with him so came with a proposal let's do this together you'll do the business part of it i'll do the construction part of it like the work the actual yeah work. yeah and i know the job mm. you know the business so you know we pondered about it and we thought why not we at that point had an empty office in Azabudai that we were actually thinking what we're going to do with it because we didn't want it to give out the office. 
So we were like, oh yeah, why not? Let's do that. So we we started the company. We did the branding and everything. Within a week, we had all the branding done. We've all- wow, that's right. something I love branding. I love yeah. marketing. I love mm-hmm. branding. That's what I do. That's that's what I'm good at. So we mm-hmm. just, we went on it. We started everything. We got the lawyers, set up the company, and and then I have amazing friends. So immediately <laughs> the job starts coming. Wow. Because mm. when I, when when we've said, oh, this is what we're gonna do, you know, renovation company. Uh, my friends, they go like, oh, we need to fix this. We need to fix that. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. Perfect. Let's, Perfect. Let's, yeah. We bought the car, you know, for it, the kind of K-Track, and we started the business. And then uh, little by little, when I start, you know, uh, promoting the promoting the company, it starts coming. The businesses start coming because foreigners actually have a lot of properties in Japan. Mm. But they don't have the support from the companies to help them do their stuff. Sure. So a lot of businesses start coming. And that was that was really amazing because I never thought that that would be, you know, something that would keep me so busy. Mm. But yeah, and I love it. I love it. I love when I come somewhere as a as a foreign woman, <laughs> you know, strat there with my heels. Mm. Uh, for I'm imagining it. Yep. You know, <laughs> and I come to like you know uh, a construction a construction site. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a, and it's a learning curve because of course you know at that point when you are doing stuff you have to start educating yourself about the industry and things. Mm-hmm. Because you need to understand what you are actually talking about because I'm not only selling the company at this point when I come to for an inspection. I kind of need to know what I'm talking about. So a lot of lot of education and a lot of, you know, learning as you go. Mm. But it's great. Great fun. Yeah. Who would have thought from having your own house renovated, you would stumble on this business idea and find a niche that you didn't know was underserved, which it obviously is, right? This very underserved niche that people have needed this and nobody had the great um connection of the person who can do the work and you guys having the yep. business sort of knowledge yep. to get it cracking and the connections to bring in those first foreign customers and then word of mouth i think is probably helping yeah, now right yeah you know uh tracy northcourt from uh tokyo family mm. staff asked me to be a guest on their real estate podcast wow in i think that's going to be about a year ago Mm-hmm. And so Tracy, so Tracy asked me to be on the podcast, and then after the episode, they actually asked me to to get on permanently. So mm-hmm. I'm very soon gonna have my first anniversary of uh, being the mm-hmm. member of the Japan Real Estate uh, Expert Panel. Wow! So, Congratulations! Uh, yeah, we have that. <laughs> on, we have it on YouTube, and we mm. have it on. Uh, um on podcast as a podcast Mm -hmm. youtube videos and podcast and we did we actually did the first english uh real estate summit in february Mm. as a as a one-day event Mm -hmm. and it was great it was amazing success we are five uh so there is uh ziv nakajima magen that does real estate uh investment properties there is Emil Gorgis from uh, Japan Real Estate that uh, usually helps people buying their homes mm. here in Japan and helps them with financing because he's a real expert on financing. It's um, unbelievable the things he knows about it. Then Tracy from uh, Tokyo uh, Short Stays. Mm. Uh, Tracy is a queen when it comes to short-term rentals. Yes. And then there is uh, Matt Ketchum that is uh, the Akia Inaka. Yes, that I've yes. seen his things yes. about that. Wow, so, right. So Matt and I'm the fifth. I'm the fifth member. So we had the summit, and it was great fun. Oh, sounds it, like a dream team. You've got yeah. Yeah, all of the aspects there. Fantastic team. We were. We just, you know, first of all, like we are really uh, good together talking. But as a business, symbiotics is really great because. Basically, you buy a property and you either want to live in it or you want to rent it out and have a business out of it. But 
so you either buy a, a home or you buy an investment property or you buy an inaka you know mm. some kind of akia mm. and decide what you want to do with that and then you need me to renovate it and if you want to do the business module you need tracy yes to either run it for you or you need to consult with her and then you book her as an and as, as an expert mm. because mm -hmm. she also does she also does consulting on, yes. on your terms mm. so you kind of you know so we are a great mix and so i'm really really happy that tracy asked me over mm. yeah so we will put some links for that in the show notes so that people can oh, click through yeah. yeah and find all of that because it's so great to have all of that information in english and not have to wade through it in japanese and also to have it sort of filtered for our audience of you know foreigners right the japanese yeah. information <laughs> we don't necessarily exactly. need all of it and, you know i think and this is no offense to to japan at all but japan they kind of like to talk in length about one thing that in english we can say that in one sentence or two sentence in japanese they would you it's know a whole page yeah yeah it's a full <laughs> It's a full page and, and kind of like the flexibility is not really there. And as foreigners, we always think of solution first and how to do it quickly and stuff. So so it's kind of when you can find uh, information that is, uh, you know, on point and it's kind of quick, then I think that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And and as I said, foreigners, they have so much money. They have properties here. They they want to invest, they are interested in the country. So, so it's great. The podcast is very, very informational. I think really, really helpful mm -hmm. for people. So it was to me, the most shocking thing is that we've done the, we've done the summit. We started 9.30 AM. We finished around 6 PM and most people stayed there throughout the whole thing. Mm for the whole day right yes we did we did five sessions we had really short breaks between we had short break for lunch because we were five of us and we kind of wanted each of us to share a little bit and the people people they stayed for all the sessions mm. they were interactive and and then when they were leaving they were like oh well when are you doing a next one yeah so, when are you doing the next one is there a next one is it yes, we're definitely going to do the next one. You know, we want to, but this time, because people really said, you know what, we want more time with each of you. We want more in-depth kind of right. you know, discussions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it as a weekend thing. Right. Two full days of. Two full days, you know, with some sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, me as a renovation company, I'm going to bring some uh, workshop there so people can, mm -hmm. you know, try hands-on you know, to do little things. So we're going to do it like that. And it's going to be in the fall. Mm -hmm. In the Most fall, probably, right. Probably either end of October or like the uh, end of September or the second half of October, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will keep our eyes open for that one, especially, <laughs> yeah, if you're listening and you're like, us. you are in, looking into getting into the property market or trying to and not succeeding, then this is probably going to be a great thing to join. So yeah, keep an eye out for what Blanca and her team are up to with that. That's very cool. Thank what are you, you seeing that is like a popular or booming in Japan at the moment in real estate sort of, or even in, in your industry in the actual renovations? What's. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of foreigners buying properties here mm. in Japan because uh, the yen is kind of weak. That's true. <laughs> it's hurting. <laughs> it's really hurting it's for those who live it, it here. Was, it was even weaker at the at the peak of or at the low of yen a few months back. There was a huge influx of foreign mm. buyers mm. because at that point, for them, the properties were like half the price. They were half price. Yeah, you know. So it's a lot of lot of foreigners buying properties, and Japan does not have a uh, limit. You can buy as long as you can afford it. You can buy properties even if you do not live here. Mm. You do not have to be the resident resident of Japan to actually be able to buy a property. You Is have that to unusual. Have... It's that... quite unusual, you know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of countries they are protecting their they are protecting their properties and their land and everything. Japan, you know, they don't have enough people. That's quite obvious. There's a decline of uh, population and there's a lot of abandoned properties or a lot mm. of properties that 
they are not that really abandoned, but nobody wants them. Uh, the families, they inherited them, for example. And the young people, they don't really want to live there because they would be a little bit outside of Tokyo or outside of bigger cities. So they don't want to, they don't want it. They don't want to pay the taxes for it and the upkeep and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're looking forward to sell. So to buy properties here in Japan is actually very good. The only thing people where a lot of people or a lot of investors make mistake is they don't realize that buying a property in Japan does not entitle you to any residency. Yes, uh, we found that out. Yeah. And yep. even if you are entitled to residency, don't count on being able to come and go freely. Go yes, mm. it's kind of, <laughs> but that's where a lot of people make the mistake, but you know, mm. they can, yeah. they kind of, a lot of people first buys the property and then they are trying to figure out a way how, how they can stay here right. for, you know, permanently or even retire here. I have, we have a lot of Americans that uh, want to, for some reason, kind of retire or work remotely from Japan. Right. Yeah. When I visit my husband's hometown, which is in Totori Prefecture. Ooh. So, mm, so if you want to talk about a population decreasing, like that is a very um, empty part of Japan, a lot of Akia around his neighborhood. Whenever we visit, I'm like to check, is that building fallen down yet? You know, like which houses are still standing, which ones have fallen down. So yeah, just so much. And it's, and you're like, why don't they just sell? It was like, well, nobody no, wants to buy it. buy it. Nobody will buy that. Nobody will pay any money for nope. it. And then they have to deal with the, you know, the what's left, you know, the, the rundown sort Garbage. of old houses. In on, yeah, it's waste just, is waste disposal right. here mm. in the country yeah. is crazy mm -hmm. so we kind of try but you know that's what people don't want to don't want to deal with it the cost of you know disposing everything and throwing it away and no nah. so they just leave it there eventually it rotten's usually even when you if you are buying for example akia i think you'll have to figure out or any house if you have to figure out if there are any outstanding payments that will fall on your head. Oh, if, will they transfer to you even though? Some you... of them, I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how many, but I know that some of them might actually go on you or they will ask you to settle it be before you you buy the property and stuff. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things, but all this, you know, and young people don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then the inheritance tax yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they just don't want to deal with it. So it's left there. And then, you know, eventually it just falls down yeah which is so dangerous like some of these these houses are right on the road aren't they they're not sort of yeah back from the street like you would imagine in my country yeah, there's very few houses are built on the road but yeah in japan they're right there in very narrow streets and things so like i was ex uh, saying to you before when we visit totori we i actually have to say the kids don't walk down that street because that house is derelict and it could fall on you wow. <laughs> this this is how bad it is like and because it's very narrow lanes mm -hmm. and the it was built for when horses pulled carts down the road that the roads are the space for a horse and a cart to to go down a small horse and cart right mm -hmm. from that era and um, before people had cars and yeah, my, my father-in-law is someone who remembers the era before people had cars in his neighborhood and they all yep. just went around on horses and carts and bicycles. I'm like, oh yep. yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's the way it is because mm. you know, they, a lot of the streets, like when we were looking for our houses, uh, for a house to buy, my husband had a condition. It cannot be close to a water, mm -hmm. like close to a river or anything. Mm -hmm. And that has to have uh access road that mm. in case anything happens like fire truck can actually drive through it mm. because a lot of the roads that like a lot of the houses or the properties they are so inside if anything happens they can't get to you that is true like if i think about that a it would be only a, a very small fire truck could pass through the streets yeah. right and when i'm driving my 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 family sort of size car i'm like oh my god how do people yeah. get down these roads yeah it's very stressful that's really good yeah. things to think about that's awesome thank you for that so yeah <laughs> access roads 
not near water. Um, I would add to that the land that the house is built on is not infilled land. Like it's it's cut from like the yeah. mountainside or, you know, it's it's not like an old uh, rice field that's been filled in. And it, that happens a lot too, right? That yeah. land is, and it's not good when earthquakes happen or there's massive. Um, you know, I think with anything you do, and it doesn't just come with buying a house, but with anything you do, in terms of business or in terms of purchases, you just have to do your due diligence. You know, that's just what it is. It's like, do your research, check what's going on. You know, it's the same same thing with investments. Buying a house, buying a property is any is an investment as any other. So whatever you do, do your due diligence. Because if you don't, you will pay for it dearly after. Mm, that's true. You know, mm. sometimes people buy houses and then they don't think about the fact that in japan you can actually buy a house but the land is on lease sure right mm -hmm. and stuff like that they don't realize all these things or as you say the land is actually it's uh it, it it used to be you know a field or something it's not a proper proper land all these little little things where are the breaks of you know where are your borders of your land and mm -hmm. stuff like that it's just problems as any other that's and true people mm. People just people think, oh, but the real realtor will tell me. Of course not. He just wants to sell the property. <laughs> it's not his, you know. Yeah. Did you ask the question? I love looking at Japanese real estate sites and, and just I'm shocked at the at the photos that are up there of like someone's like messy house and they're trying to sell this house. Whereas where I'm from, like a real estate agent's photos, they're all pristine. The house looks just oh, yeah. perfect. And I'm like, what are they trying to sell this house? Like, why would you put this photo on here? It's dark, can't see anything. <laughs> so hilarious. But it's interesting. What does, yeah, your due diligence look like in Japan? Whereas you wouldn't necessarily, like my due diligence in New Zealand looks very different to what it looks like in Japan, things you should be looking out for. So this is some good things you pulled up right there. Like, like where actually is my boundaries? Um, is there a decent road to access this in case of a fire yeah. or natural emergency? Who does the road belong to? Yeah, all right. Who does this road belong to? And what am I expected to upkeep on, you know, this road yeah. or, you know, pay for fencing or whatever? That's, that's something that happens everywhere. But yeah, um, we actually, you know, I was telling you that before about living in Fukushima, my dream as a New Zealander and every New Zealander has the dream to buy a piece of property with a water view, right? This is... Mm -hmm. For every New Zealander, if your property has a water view, you can die happy, you know, that this is what everyone. Yes. And so when we were building our house, I was like, oh, I want to live out by the beach and la la la. And my husband's like, hell no. I'm like, oh, dream killer, you know, like, <laughs> and it's, he's like, no, you don't understand what that means here in Japan. Like, that is not, you know, because he grew up by the, he grew up by the sea in Totori, like his family's house is several hundred meters from the sea. Yeah. You know is what that actually entails that you car rusts and you have to deal with this and all of that and then later we you know a year later we did have a tsunami and if if i had had my way we wouldn't have a house anymore it would have been yeah. washed away so um yes thank you thankful to my husband who was all about the hazard maps and looking at the yeah. at the ground and all of this and i was like this is boring i just want a water view <laughs> but Dream it paid hard. off <laughs> you know Dreams are great, but uh, you kind of have to think about so many things. I've always, I'm like you, I want a beach view. I'm, I'm a total beach girl. Mm -hmm. So every time. I luckily got my way in Nigeria because they don't have an issue of tsunamis. Right. So our Nigerian, one of our properties there, we have a condo about 300 meters from the beach. Okay. So I have you the beach check view. Check that one off. <laughs> on the beach in you know five minutes mm -hmm. and oh so i'm good i i'm good i have that but yes would i love to have that house where you have the walkway and you walk right on your little beach i would love that but living in japan and seeing what water can do mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah we are wiser to that now i think yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you learn you live and learn that's why they also always say when you buy your first house you know it's not your last Exactly. Right. You've got to go yeah. through about five houses before you get it right. I think. Yeah. <laughs> the, minute, the minute you buy the house mm -hmm. or build a house 
and you move and you realize what's wrong with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I think there's actually an ancient Chinese proverb that my Chinese friend told me. It's like, you need to build a house three times until you get it right or something like that's that would be the true because it uh you know even my my cousin back in Czech says the same thing it's like uh you build one or two houses just so you know what you actually don't want <laughs> right yeah yeah sounds you know, that that sounds exactly right yeah, yeah. it takes it takes few <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've really enjoyed this real estate chat with you, Blanca. <laughs> I've learned a lot and I'm um, yeah, I'm interested to sort of look and see what's out there because now that, you know, I have my one house, you know, which is every mm -hmm. Japanese person's dream is to have yeah. their one house that they built themselves and they've chosen all the wallpaper and everything. But yeah, what are the other possibilities out there? Because, you know, I haven't really looked with that knowledge that real estate tends to depreciate in Japan, you know, mm. which is, you know, something that doesn't happen in my own country. So uh, yeah, what, what sort of out there that could be good or yeah, I'm, I'm, my interest is peaked again. Mm. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's fun game. You kind of, you know, if you are flexible with, with locations and stuff and, you know, if like as foreigners, we can do a lot of things, DIY and it's, it's good. It's good. I think Japan, they do say it, it depreciates, but it also depends mm -hmm. a lot. So, and it's not like that anymore that much either. So I wouldn't be that worried about it as long as you also own the land that is mm -hmm. with the house. Mm -hmm. The only thing like what's, what kind of is sad to me is that everything, they just build the houses on such a small pieces of land that people end up just barely having one car park space mm -hmm. and that's it like no garden no nothing around it and that kind of breaks my heart and in my opinion defeats the purpose of actually owning a house right mm. so i think when we when you don't live in the big cities and you live outside you again have the luxury of actually having a little land mm -hmm. around your house mm -hmm. and you can sit outside you know mm. enjoy your life mm. that's that's what they don't have in the big cities that's true so it's it's, mm. true. it's what you want in life you know uh we always say with our with my husband that you know at, at our stage of life we kind of don't need to be rushing to the big cities every day we can do a lot of our work from the house and you know mm. I can sit on my sofa, drink my red wine and still do a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lucky <laughs> us, right? Wonderful. Yeah. To be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. I can that's work right. from here in Fukushima right? and, and go and play in Tokyo sometimes and really enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part of probably being my own boss or having my husband as my boss. <laughs> 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 you know. I can always ask for a day off. You can, or, yes. You know, work from the living room, work from my, you know, sitting outside uh, in our garden and do and be productive there. So that's that's just such a good thing about when, when you don't have to worry going to the office and. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Thank you for sharing this, like what, you know, kind of lifestyle that you've built for yourself in Japan. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Blanca's doing it. Possible. I'm doing it. Of course yeah. it's possible. We've been we've been at it for twenty years. Right. It's not doesn't happen overnight. Hmm. There's been days that uh, before we had David, we both worked six days a week and worked long hours. You know, they, they were you know, we used to have those kind of like eighty hour weeks and stuff like that. And then when we had David I I became full-time mom right. for a while. Mm -hmm. And my husband was working those 80 hour <laughs> weeks. Right. You know, yeah. sometimes even more, you know. But then right now we kind of have more freedom. We, you know, have enough of uh, investments and we have companies that we can control from wherever we are. And do a lot of work, you know, kind of decide when you want to work and what you want to work on mm. so when somebody tells you that you know money is that it's about money and stuff it's not about that it's about the freedom that comes with money yeah mm. so and that's kind of like it's great we still work very hard at times and we still have days that we don't work at all 
and then you know we take we travel and we take off but even when we travel we still bring our computers and we still spend you know a bunch of you know a few hours a day working and then we have fun it's when you can figure out the balance and you have the options then you know you can enjoy it but it doesn't didn't happen over honestly 20 years 20, 30 years in my husband's case 20 years for me yeah it hasn't been an overnight thing yeah it no takes, yeah oh, <laughs> it's just a work in progress yeah exactly no it's not yeah. you don't come and you know end up having you know great how you don't wake up have a great house and you know beautiful car and yeah you know, enjoy your life you kind of have to work for it yeah i'm lucky that it happened for us a little bit earlier than in that whatever when people are 65 70 and then they retire yeah mm. i'm lucky that for us it happened sooner you know smart investments and moves on my husband's part because that's also part of his job it's his yeah. business <laughs> it would be sad if he was only advising others <laughs> and he hadn't done it himself smartly yeah and didn't do it himself exactly so, you yeah know, it, it's great but it's possible it's always possible it doesn't have to be that you know kind of working hard not enjoy your life but yeah and yeah. it's possible in japan too right so yes. yeah we're having japan a nexus great. to japan yeah it's possible to be an entrepreneur here have investments yes. do anything you want and i love that and i love telling stories of women yeah. who are doing those kinds of things in japan so i think it was a lot of women that are doing that in yeah japan, so. right despite the patriarchy and everything <laughs> and the image of of women you know in the kitchen <laughs> there's a lot of amazing women in japan mm. yes there definitely are and let's shine a light on them some more as we go forward yes, yes. very needed very, very needed very, that's right very needed yeah well thank you so much for your time today blanca i've really enjoyed Pleasure. getting to know you more hearing about your renovations i don't need any renovations personally but I know there must be a lot of people who would love to to do that. But yeah, it can be hard yeah. to DIY in Japan when it's just not the stuff for DIY. I find it, yeah. that we, yes. yeah. It is. And, you know, the, sometimes the structure of the buildings yes. is different yes. and things like that. And, you know, uh, if you, when people, when people cannot do it themselves or don't have the time to do it themselves, then they can, you know, reach out to me mm, yes put it out for that yes it's <laughs> excellent to have that that service in english and as well yeah yeah okay well we will keep keep in touch thank you so much definitely, definitely. there's a lot to always you know chat about because uh, that's just one part of what we do we we kind of do so many things we've wrote a book as well about financial freedom and independence because uh that's uh finance is kind of my husband's uh business and helping people that don't have to kind of try and you know sort out their finances and their life and things it's uh it's part of what we do mm. as, uh, as people as family and as a company as well so uh you know that's also something that uh I can talk for hours about it. <laughs> Might have to have you come back in a, another episode and tell us some more about that. But yeah. if you're interested in that, we will definitely pop that in the show notes too. Yeah. People can have a look at the book and, and yeah, there's more. a lot. I mean, mm. There's really a lot we do. We are now also with some of the foreigners here in Japan with amazing foreign uh, couple and few other friends working on a project for uh, empowering children on their way to entrepreneurship and uh, even, you know, understanding the diversity and knowing that, you know, no matter how different you are, you can be amazing and you can be strong. So we mm. are just starting the program. Oh. Japan and we actually got uh, a, a, a kind of backing mm. from one of the local um governments oh brilliant so we are starting we are starting doing that in nagariyama right now mm. but from nagariyama we're gonna go further and further because uh nagariyama local government is really they are very 
Uh, I would say I don't want to say non-Japanese. <laughs> <They're laughs> open-minded, progressive. progressive. Yeah. yeah, okay. Very open-minded, very progressive. So they are the first one that said, yes, this is something we know that our children need. So we started there, but it's going to go, it's going to go, first it's going to go, you know. Mm. Some social proof, our, yeah. Then, mm. And then it might go global as well. But right now it's going to go, it's going to go country, countrywide wow. within the next two years. It's a big project. So that one is also amazing, you know. Gosh, alongside all the other things you're doing, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to keep it yes, <laughs> yes exactly all right thank you so much Blanca no thank you thank you for having me